All right, so obviously I've tried to ultimately remove myself from Animal Jam and basically just need to get out of the toxic hellhole that they practically call a community. But there is one thing that I need to release publicly now and to come out and really get deeper into it, which is best what is known as the Hoshiko relapse. So let's get right into that. Hoshiko, formerly known as some of her previous usernames like Peace, Love, Joy, Letters, Jamal, and others, was a former content creator for Animal Jam. I say was a former content creator because I'm pretty sure she deleted her YouTube channel for the millionth time at this point. But three years ago was when her first channel began, and she was very calm and collected, and she began to get a stable fan base, which was over in the 1K zone. Which, unfortunately, this sub goal ended up getting to her head, which takes us to her first controversy. So Hoche actually began to get more absorbed and involved into the rarity side of Animal Jam and less caring about her own fan base that she managed to gain after her hard work of video making. And of course it's common to get lost in thought even when you earn the slightest amount of fame, but the way she used her fans and followers was the more so sickening part of it. And of course, everyone was blinded by the fact that Hoshiko would associate with them and thought of nothing of it when she asked them for big favors, like giving her some of their rares and other valuable in-game items. And this further led us to the downfall of her YouTube channel. Her personality had completely altered and she was acting out in more disturbing ways. So if you are sensitive to topics such as depression, suicide, and mental disorders, I'm gonna quickly put a disclaimer. I advise that you quit watching this video and I'm going to carry on. It was noticeable that she was suffering from some sort of mental condi condition, not trying to combine condition and illness right there. And the viewers assumed it was something such as like either slight depression or maybe high functioning autism. Again, there is no real answer to if Hosh does suffer from mental illnesses because she's never really come out and actually told us, nor have we able to uh, trust her word previously, so it's like, can we trust her now either? So, I mean, she claims she has mental illnesses, but I don't know. And of course you can't rebuttal the fact that you've told fans to get raped and kill themselves because you have a mental illness, which is one of the bigger problems uh, with her that I have of what she did. And regardless of any disorders you have, you can't expect to be forgiven by blaming it on something that you don't seek help to solve, because if you're not going to work to solve it, then there's no chance of ever getting the situation that you're in better, so... And her actions only begin to worsen. On one of her live streams, one of the most disturbing videos surfaced with her tightening a belt ever so slightly around her neck. And I believe that was the first outbreak that had caused so much uproar from the community and her viewers, and it led to her first channel actually being taken down, given for violence and inappropriate behavior. So the second outbreak, I'd say, was around the time when I got involved, which was around late June or early July, and I was just lurking YouTube for some good Animal Jam streamers to essentially just give some items to and basically just try to make their day. And I put them in a better mood, you know, do something good. And I was greeted with a pretty disturbing stream name. And at the time, my Discord server was actually kind of fairly active. So I posted the link there and asked if anyone knew about Hoshiko, which led me down the rabbit hole into getting into her stream and some backstory on her, where a friend and I like began to interact and ask her viewers basically what had happened and why this stream was taking the turn that it did. And I guess a few people said that she'd been lashing out or causing some strange drama in her own live chat. I don't know. I wasn't really following with the conversation that much. Doesn't help that her viewers are all like practically under the age of 10 not to be blamed because they are in the Animal Jam community. But it just doesn't help when you're really trying to dive deeper into the situation and work things out, if you know what I mean. So at the time, we really thought nothing of it because people were as fairly clueless as we were and a few began to say that she had a history and had gone through actually many YouTube channels and that it was a repetitive cycle and it happened every amount of time. And I began doing a bit of investigating, as did my friends at the time, and we got in contact with one of Hoshigo's ex-friends, whose name I will keep anonymous as I know they do not want to get involved with Hoshiko's channel or just be associated with her name 
<laughs> just keeping that person private, you're welcome. Basically, this person gave me two Google Doc files full of just screenshot evidence of what Hoshiko had previously done under her different channel names, and there was a ton to go through, tons of files. I'll link them down in the description below, or I might incorporate them in this video. I don't know which, but there were like a ton of videos, MP3s, just screenshots, and a lot of them were swearing, promotion of violence, and just really icky stuff in general. So I watched a bit of Hoshiko more, and she streamed practically daily, and I was just getting the general feel, you know, who is this chick, what kind of content does she do? And I just wanted to see for myself, does this really happen as frequent as people say it does? Now, not even a day later, she was streaming again and had brought up her discussion about mental health and the fact that she suffered from depression, ADHD, and other disorders, which I cannot remember the names of because, again, this was kind of a while back. And one of my friends decided, hey, maybe we can find some common ground with her, you know. She had depression at the time, too, and also suffered from mental health issues as well. And Hosh began to respond with real sketchy kind of sentences when she was confronted. And what she was taking, she was re very repetitive with what she was saying she was taking and... It led us onto a trippy track of, oh god, maybe this chick is just lying about illness for uh, clout and pity. And it seems to be a common guilt method and practically a trend these past two years. But her immediate reaction was to break down and begin screaming, accusing this person, and basically just fueling a fire with gasoline to cause even more chaos. And once... I'm gonna tell you, once Hoshiko is questioned in the slightest, her gang of channel mods begin to attack, like straight up. From personal contact with some of these mods, they are in an age range of nearly as young as 8 and as old as 14. Keep in mind here, Hoshiko is, or claims to be, 22 years of age. Kind of concerning, but there's not really much we can really do for that, I guess, in this type of situation. So into the next controversy about her mods. Hoshiko's mods are practically infamous for abusing their powers and hiding or muting the chat members that basically have any sort of opinion. And while, yes, we were poking into some territory that maybe we should have been more mindful of, this sort of action was no way acceptable or tolerable in the slightest because the sheer amount of just cussing, derogatory terms, slurs, it was more than enough to represent that all these children were far from mature and were just troublemakers, adding even more fuel into this fire. And a few mods, shockingly enough, actually did fight for the rights of the chat members and sided with us, only to be denied and removed from their positions as mods and told to shut up. So this kind of just kept falling into a bigger and bigger hole of nothing but fighting. And it got to the point that many users in the chat, including myself, were coming back on spare accounts and trying to be logical and trying to be calm about the whole situation, only to be attacked basically constantly. And it's well noticeable that Hoshiko does not control her chat the right way, or give fair punishments, or bother to stop the drama that happens in her chat, even though she can hide people on her channel, turn off the chat, or mute people in general. So this was round one of many more that would begin on the Hoshiko channel. And fast forward, there's no drama and everything seemed more relaxed, there was nothing to worry about. But then Hoshiko streams again for a debate to quit Animal Jam due to believe uh, the attacks and hatred that she was receiving. Or that's what she's told me, and the fact that her channel was supposedly failing because she wasn't gaining subscribers. So... At this point, the chat was kind of a mix with maybe one-fourth of the chat saying that she should stay on Animal Jam and just ignore the toxicity, which is very difficult, mind you. Whereas the other three-fourths of the viewers in the stream were saying that she was just better off quitting a YouTube Animal Jam or just repurposing her channel and doing different videos on different games, like Minecraft. And inarguably, that would have probably been her safest route, but again, didn't happen. So I tried to reason with Hoshiko because I didn't really want her to quit either. I thought she did have potential with her channel and we fixed everything. We worked everything out at that time and everything was going well. We were texting over this app called Google Hangouts. A lot of people are probably familiar with that. And I offered to help her grow her channel 
because at the time I was also decently known to the Animal Jam streamer part of the community, and I thought by doing maybe a collab video with her, I could gain her channel more exposure to the community because any exposure is good exposure, and help her work towards bigger things, because we planned out what we'd do and give away. And all was practically set in shape. All from there that we needed were no mess ups on Hoshiko sign and a time and date to schedule our video together. So fast forward a little bit more, a little after we were planning to do our collab, and Hoshiko has made the choice to quit Animal Jam and switch over to Play Wild. No flaws in that, you'd think, <laughs> but not that was noticed at first. So, Hoshiko wanted to primarily play Play Wild and begin to cross trade her items from Animal Jam over to Play Wild. And for those who don't know what cross trading is, you're basically giving away items from one game to a person for items on another game, and a common method that a lot of people get scammed by or generally gain rarity fast on other games for. And at the time, she was wanting to cross-trade her Magenta Furry, which was in the game uh, Animal Jam, I think, worth maybe 9 or 10 solids, a solid being a black lung, of course. And she was looking to get the equal value of that in Play Wild. Understandable. And I'd actually even seen her around at the time, looking to find a cross-trade partner who'd take her up on her offer and trying to get rid of her items from PC. So about a few days later, and she's streaming a video called... I lost my magenta furry. Ooh. Hmm. So apparently during her cross trade, her partner actually did end up following through with the trade and she had gotten scammed out of her magenta furry. And though there was no recorded evidence or evidence that she had even gotten scammed, there was a lot lining up that maybe it did go through successfully because Somewhere, somehow, out of the blue, she has some fairly good items on Play Wild. Now, I don't play Play Wild, so I don't know what the items were, but I remember someone telling me their worth, and I was like, yeah, that seems pretty suspicious because she does have items on PC and Play Wild now. So people began to feel bad for her and gifted her some items. Makes sense, you know, if you do get scammed, even if you don't, your fans are going to try to help you back up into your rarity where you were before you got scammed. And not even as a jealousy thing, like I swear, but this chick could make more profit off her impressionable audience and taking advantage of them for items than it takes to get me... I didn't even word that right, but we're just going to go with it. She makes easier profit in that game by manipulating her fans than it takes me a week from what I usually got in my streams. Like It was crazy. She got a lot of good stuff. And I wasn't really fixated on that scenario of the time, I just figured that she got scammed. But uh, during time, I didn't know that she did have a successful cross trade. Keep in mind, it did go successfully. And she got a few more rares, and she wanted to focus on getting her magenta furry back. Understandable, she theoretically got scammed out of it, didn't happen, just saying. I know it, I'm kind of like hopping back and forth. But a person by the username Queer was willing to help her and get her magenta furry back. And at the time, Queer said, send me your two rare item headdresses and I'll trade this person for the magenta furry. And honestly, we all saw it. We knew it was a scam, but Hoshiko, following through, very gullible, did so. And about five minutes later, after a few claims of lag and slow internet, Queer basically just said, oh well, I scammed you, I got the items. And she lost, again, two rare item Monday headdresses worth about maybe two to three black longs. And she practically began choking on tears in her stream and gasping. And I just realized, oh god, we have to get these items back. And after probably 30 minutes to an hour of negotiating with Queer, we did make a deal that I would trade two solids for one headdress, and Hosha's friend would trade, I think, two solids as well for the other headdress. Honestly, don't even ask me why I did this. I was thinking maybe it would help show that I wasn't a bad person and that I didn't hate Hoshiko like she thought I did. But I was just trying to make amends at that point, and <laughs> that didn't last long at all. Hosh had me blocked on Animal Jam and hidden from her stream chat, so I really couldn't say that I was getting her items back for her. So when she saw the fact that one of the headdresses was off Queer's trade list and I had it, she began to lose it and accused me of being behind this scam with Queer. And thankfully, Hosh's friend did come in clutch and say that, hey, she's trying to help you. 
she's not a bad person. And eventually after that went through, I sent Hosha's headdress. We actually got into a call over Hangouts again. And she thanks me a lot. She apologized for accusing me of being a scammer and talking or taking it back that I wasn't a bad person. We were fine, you know. She had a few relapses, yeah, but we could get over that. And if you had agreed, you'd be very, very wrong. So this person I was at the I was friends with at the time began to slowly manipulate Hoshiko into hating me because at the time I had, yes, said some quite regrettable things that were used against me to show me in a negative light. And I, it wasn't a heat of a moment type thing, you know, we were all like ganging up on her, all my friends, we were like feeding the fire, we were just screaming and screaming and screaming in voice chat. And yeah, we did say some really stupid stuff and that destroyed Hoshiko's and my friendships. Destroyed quicker than the universe when Thanos snapped. And we had a few back and forth stream battles, which are now taken down. Thank God, they're really gross and cringy. And if you were trying to find them, please don't. You're not going to find them. But Hosh and I would practically go live and just flame each other and fight each other as our viewers just watched kind of confused and scared. <laughs> but this went on for a fair bit of time before I eventually gave up trying to explain to her fans that what she was doing was wrong and manipulative. So I just settled down and tried to focus on my own channel. As you do, mind your own business, Skullax. It would be that easy. And at the time, my friend group also made amends and began to talk things out and agree that no more drama would interfere with us. And another promise that was, that was going to be broken extremely soon. We all talked about our problems and everything was good. You know, we thought we had all worked it out. We thought it was all well, life was calmer, YouTube was better on the Animal Jam perspective. And... That was broken after I formed a friendship with this decently known Animal Jam YouTuber called Patch the Alpha, and he's practically infamous for being very blunt and sometimes even, in parentheses, toxic, air quotes, parentheses, same difference. And upon getting to know him, guys, he's really not that bad of a person. He's actually quite funny and nice. I, you know, I think it's an act. I think Patch is just mega soft British boy underneath, but, you know, he doesn't want to show that to his young, loyal fans. He wants to be the big bad alpha of Animal Jam, so. I see right through you, Patch. I see right through you. I'm sure he's gonna watch this. I'm just gonna say it now. Hi, Patch. Love you. So he said stuff, but he's, again, a pretty calm guy. We got into a voice chat with Hoshiko, and he planned to do an actual interview with her uh, for his Tea Spill podcast. I was there. I was just kind of listening and laughing behind my microphone. And we thought, you know, it'll gain her some more exposure and it'd give her the chance to renew herself to the community that practically hates her guts. And she could represent herself in front of Patch's fans and just fix it all up, you know. Unfortunately, Hoshiko just wasn't there during the interview. And the thing was such a flop that even thinking back on it, it was ultimately just cringe content and belonged in a cringe compilation. Like, I kid you not, it was god awful. And I was too busy, again, snickering behind the computer on mute and only unmuting to throw shade at typical Rocky because I was just having my... Jesus, I don't even know what I was doing. I was just having the time of my life behind that microphone. But, you know, if, if I ever did second chance get into a call with Patch the Alpha and, I don't know, got on his podcast, I'd probably really <laughs> try to... If I could go back in time, I would probably make sure it was one-on-one, -on -one, just him and Hoshiko, and then me and him, and basically get the story straight, because it was just such a mess that time that really nothing was going to happen, but we also just deleted the video because maybe getting Hoshiko on Patch's channel wasn't a good idea, and nobody really wanted to associate with her anyways just because of her title, that she was a toxic player. And understandably so. So anyways, after giving up on doing that AJ Spill podcast, Patch and I actually continued to talk in a call and basically just kind of talk about how absolutely shittily that interview had gone. Like, he scrapped it and we left it at that. I'm sorry, Hosh. <laughs> that video is not going to go up like you thought it was. So around some time after uh, Patch scrapped that interview, Hoshiko deleted her channel again after uploading a quitting video because, again, somehow she was being targeted again with hate and rude comments. So she deleted her channel. 
And that was a surprise, not really. Up until not even a day later, she comes back on another channel. I can't remember why I was Googling her at the time. I think I was trying to find some kind of exposed video to reference. But uh, Hoshiko came up and I was like, oh, what's this? Checked it out. Yep. The start of a new Hoshiko. And she made an apology video. And, you know, she apologized to everyone she had once hurt or attacked and sent her fans after so you'd think she would actually go through with what she said in that video and actually work on spreading positivity and changing herself. No, I thanked her for apologizing and she basically said she wasn't apologizing. She said whatever she said in her video, very vividly, I remember this. She said, I am sorry for attacking these people. And she mentioned my name. She said, I'm sorry, Skull Eyes, for attacking you, you know? And that completely just contradicted herself and the comment she made responding to me when I thanked her for an apology, but she denied it and said it was supposed to be me for whatever reason to apologize. And I mean, that wasn't going to happen. I'd never really done anything wrong. I didn't even know what I did to begin with that ultimately started us being so against each other. But my other close friends, who I've known for probably two years almost now, uh, began to get involved just because of how much I would complain about her. And they also began to call her out on her hip, hypocritical manipulative ways. Cancel culture? Not necessarily. Just trying to expose the toxic waste for who they are. And after two of my friends pointed out what she was doing was wrong, she did end up finally apologizing to me and said... Everything was fine. Again, she got her magenta furry back. Her streams were good. Everything was working well. Hey, maybe there's some potential. Maybe she really has changed. Ha. No. No. She got it stamped again. Apparently this time, though, there was like a highly unusual situation to it. She had been threatened by a person that if she didn't accept this slight undertrade that they had leak her personal information and apparently it put her family in a position that she did not want to risk. So she just, I don't know, gave up the furry and was like, you know what? I don't want to risk my family. But of course it was fake. So then she streamed about it and everyone was again pretty annoyed with it because God, this has been the third or fourth time that she's been scammed. And it was getting fairly easy to see that this was beginning to get repetitive and it was her fault for being scammed. She never learned from her previous trades and was very dependent on her fans to give her replacement items. So after that, I basically just began to distance myself from Hoshiko, and I'd occasionally check up on her, but it was just beginning to be a big repetitive thing. She'd just cry, lash out, scream, anything to, anything in the book, you name it, she did it. She began to be using like racist slurs and directly attack people with her mods on her heels to bark at any person who dared point out that, oh my god, this 22-year-old Animal Jam player is straight up harassing her viewers. So I was pretty fed up with watching this, and along with my friends, we began to report her channel, and basically, the only way to get Hoshiko to actually shut up would be to threaten to expose her. And this was actually quite a good method to get her to calm down. And she would almost immediately be quiet and say she wouldn't do anything wrong for the future. Okay. This basically led to that channel being deleted, and for the fourth time within the span of not even three months, she moves to a second channel, maybe third, I can't even remember which one I'm on, also called Hoshiko AJ. So at this point, she had regained her rarity again for the third time, and fourth time. I don't know, I can't even keep up, there was so much stuff that happened. But she had a dark pink headdress, a black long, and a few other decent items. So I thought up the idea with my friend LZD, aka the original lady anime, that maybe we could scam her and gain some profit, seeing as she was always so easy to manipulate. And in hindsight, this was not the way to solve anything. It just made me seem like a dick, as well as a terrible content creator. So trust me, if I could, I would have totally done things different. I know I don't really like to talk about Hoshiko, especially in good light, but I don't think my actions displayed much maturity from my side either. I did make a big mistake, and we'll get right into that scam situation. So we ended up popping into a voice chat. I had the scam thought through in my head. LZD was DMing me what to do, what to say, and Hoshiko 
live streamed, you know, we were going to get her a magenta furry, theoretically, whether it was the first or last thing we did in the stream. And I said I'd help her and that I had three black longs that I could help and trade for a magenta furry with. And she said she had seven solids. So that combined 10, we were going to try to get her magenta furry back. She, so I subtly hinted that, oh, dang, if I had another seven solids worth, I could get you that magenta furry. And she finally got the hints I was uh, saying, and she was like, oh, I'll send you your, you know, I'll send you my headdress and my black lawn, and you can get the magenta furry, but please, I'm trusting you with my items, and oh my god, I was so stupid for doing this, but she was like, I'm gonna send them your way. And LZD, as soon as she sent them, LZD left the call right out, <laughs> crazy style, dipped ASAP. So I thought, oh god, I'm alone. My other friend at the time, Ava, she's still my friend today, was also in that call, but she was muted because she was nervous too, because she doesn't like to get involved with that type of stuff, and I feel bad for bringing her into that situation. So I told her that my cat was being really annoying and that I had to go get her, so I muted, and LZD told me just leave the call, leave the call, leave the call, and I felt so bad because I left with Hosha's items. I felt really bad. But LZD, you know, gave me praise and congratulated me and cheered me on. But she used a lie as a way to display that she wasn't involved with the scam, which is actually something I do have DMs on to prove that she did, in fact, actually know and helped and planned out this whole scheme of scamming Hoshiko. But LZD has since deleted Discord due to this little tidbit of not Hoshiko related, but bit of tea, you know? So... The entire backstory is about LZD. I will get into that really quick. This is kind of off topic, not really involving Hoshiko, but this is just something I really need to get out there and also raise awareness about. So LZD was formerly known as Lady Anime and she had done tons of scams and had made massive amounts of item worth from hacking and just generally scamming people she worked to befriend over time. And I don't know why I ignored these red flags, but it also led me into getting hacked. So at the time when this Hoshiko scam had happened, I had known LZD for months and she had my full trust. So I introduced her to my friends. We were all close. We memed all the time in voice chats. We called almost daily. And I needed a scapegoat to throw everyone off my case and not risk getting suspended or banned on my account. So I moved all my items over to LZD's old account, Lady Anime which she did end up putting on my email. It was a member, you know, I kind of wanted a member account to wear my items. And I thought this was fine because she planned to move the account to my email, she did it, and that was just one of her plans to get into my account. So overnight, she must have practically stayed up and switched all of my items over to her account, but also switched her account that was on my email back to her original email. And I guess you could have said karma's a bitch because that's true. And despite knowing that LZD for as long as I have, I really probably shouldn't have trusted her. And to you, I say, I'd agree. And trusting LZD and even knowing her background was stupid of me to do, but I didn't deserve the items either. It didn't matter. I planned to quit Animal Jam and start my channel fresh slate to do commentary or gaming videos. And my channel, Skolix, now actually does belong to my best friend, who I will know, I know she will make great content and upload magnificent videos on it. I have full belief in her. But ultimately, please hear me out and really take this video into heart. Hoshiko is mentally unstable and just should not be allowed on the YouTube platform. And I know we think we're helping, but we're only making the entire situation much, much worse. She's way unhealthier than what we can do to help. And no matter what we do, it won't help her. We've given it our all, but someone who refuses help can't be saved. If she's been having these relapses for years, it definitely won't stop now, no matter how many chances you give her. Please raise awareness to Hoshiko fans that despite her being at, at first kind, she won't be like that forever. She'll turn. I can guarantee that. Until she seeks out the proper help and makes a comeback, which she'll prove she changed for the better, don't get involved with her or on her channel. I know she deleted her channel as of now, but any day she could come back. She might have already come back. I haven't checked. I really don't want to check, but I guess I should. Just because if she has, I 
I just want to be informed about it and make sure she's actually doing what she's supposed to be doing. But I will put some evidence files in the description below to basically give you an idea for what Hoshiko has done in the past. And watch them at your own pace because they are somewhat disturbing. That's why I actually can't put a lot of that evidence in the video because I'd probably get, you know, like, the video taken down because some of it's just really far out there. Um, but... I also have other links in the description, including my Discord server if you'd like to join, and social media links if you'd want to follow me there. I don't know. So thank you guys for watching this video, and please stay safe. Because this platform, YouTube as a platform, it's crazy. It's undoubtedly crazy. There's so much borderline terrifying stuff here. Oh my god. You guys, just be safe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.